Joining us now with his quarterly outlook on inflation, markets, monetary policy, and more, we have Vanek, a chief executive officer, Jan Vanek. Jan, great to have you back with us. Let's start with rising price levels, which seem to be driven by supply chain issues now, more so than demand. Do you think inflation will be transitory, as the Fed has indicated? And what are your thoughts on wage pressure, given this labor market that really just keeps surprising us? Yeah, John, it's great to see you. Um, let's just replay it back to the beginning of the year a little bit when we saw the economy as kind of a car going 200 miles an hour with China and the U.S. hurtling forward, uh, the U.S. with a lot of stimulus. And the, the kind of risk was, could the car slow down to kind of 70 miles an hour and, and not kind of put too much pressure on interest rates or anything that would upset the financial markets? And so we called that, what are the risks to Goldilocks? And inflation is the big um, is the big question. I think we don't know now, so it's a little bit un unsatisfying. But if you want to call it the halftime score, right now it's looking a little worrisome. Um, but uh, the the big question is always what the Fed does, and let me unpack that. So what we worry about more uh, with respect to inflation is wage inflation, not lumber prices or natural gas prices, although of course they matter at some level. But um, wage inflation tends to be stickier. And in the long run, that can really affect long-term interest rates, 10-year interest rates. And if interest rates go up, of course, that's bad for both stocks and bonds. So um, I, I would say the inflation side of the argument is winning so far, because as you said, uh, whether it's supply chain issues or labor market issues, we're still talking about these things, I think, way longer than the transitory camp would like. So I don't think we'll know until next summer for sure, but it's something to keep an eye out. And the biggest risk to Goldilocks, as we talked about three months ago, is higher interest rates by the end of the summer. Now, the problem is it's really hard for us to figure this all out because the Fed has sort of inflated this balloon and is the biggest effect both on the stock and the bond markets. And so, uh, the, the, you know, just for example, the Fed buying of bonds, it bought more, uh, more tips last year than actually were issued. So what really are the 10-year rates? We don't know until the Fed starts tapering. So that's, that's the big risk to the portfolios, both stock and bond portfolios. And like I like to say, I wish I could give you a one-month or three-month outlook, but I really don't know whether we'll know what the answer is until about a year from now. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. And what about greenflation? Well, that's another one of these sort of surprises that's, uh, that's affect, uh, you know, the affected commodity prices, which is that as the, the, the globe is growing, the world economy is growing, and this demand for commodity grows, it's actually hard because of ESG policies to increase supply, which means that there is this multi-year trend of, uh, of price pressure. Uh, one of my colleagues cleverly called it, as you said, greenflation, which is just it's hard to find a new copper mine or lithium mine or gold mine or other places to do this activity because it, to a certain extent, it's environmentally unfriendly. So that will be an underpinning of commodity prices. And it's sort of why I think that the commodity related equities are an interesting investment and, and people should have them in their portfolios. And you're not the only one uh, keeping a close eye on inflation. Of course, this is key for the Fed as well as it weighs when to start tapering. How are you monitoring monetary policy and rates? It's really hard to do. Um, I mean, I think, uh, again, it's sort of like the Fed has inflated this balloon. Uh, Bank of America came out with a great study that we were talking about, right, which is that a lot of the S&P's performance has come from the Fed's balance sheet expansion. I mean, that is that's really amazing over the last 10 years. Rather than earnings, which would typically be the case. Right, right. I mean, yes. So um, so I think it's and then the, 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 the risk is, of course, OK, some bad shock happens like in March and April of last year. But then just the, the Fed pushes more air into the balloon. So it's really um, it's that's why markets are so incredibly overvalued these days on a price to sales and price to earnings basis. So it's really a, a bet on the Fed. I, I personally think it's not bad to keep some money on the sidelines and, and wait till prices get a little bit cheaper. 
On that note, it seems like unicorns aren't that rare anymore, and you're seeing an awakening of zombie stocks as well. Should investors be afraid that valuations have gone too far? You know, what's the 0% interest rates that the Fed has happened has meant that there's, you know, overvaluation in the private markets as well as the public markets. So it's great that IPOs are, are happening again. Um, but the fact is they're coming to market at very rich, you know, price to sales. You know, private companies are going for 20 times price to sales. That's like a, a you know, they're growing super fast, but that's like, a, a market kind of valuation. And when they finally go public, you know, my example is Uber, they go public, they're still gro they're great businesses, but the stocks are like zombie stocks. It's like they're disconnected from the profitability and revenue growth of the underlying company. And I think investors have to be aware of being able to, you know, last several years while the zombie stock catches up, you know, where, where the business catches up with the zombie stock. Finally, with historically low yields and these record high valuations, many people are really just looking for places to park their money. And it seems like more investors are dipping into alternatives. Where are you finding opportunities right now? Well, everyone is looking for yield. Uh, two, two of the themes that we're focusing on, I think, are multi-year trends. One is the energy transition, right, which is basically moving away from fossil fuels. And this is being driven by a lot of innovation in the private sector. It's not just the, the, the Green New Deal and government policies, which I think people tend to, to lose track of. And so in our resources por portfolios, besides finding a ton of value in some of those commodity uh, equity names that I mentioned before, we're also uh, looking for innovation disruptive companies in the multiple sectors that need to be more uh, energy efficient. And, and one that we like to focus on is agriculture, which uh, um, emits as, about as much CO2 as is actually the energy sector. So, uh, you know, so that's one trend. And then another um, high conviction uh, theme, investment theme that we have is blockchain, uh, crypto, or whatever you want to call it. And just the fact that this um, open source database technology can really provide a lot of financial solutions at much cheaper prices, sometimes you know, 90% cheaper in transmission. So that FinTech revolution uh, sort of that goes hand in hand with crypto, we think is really exciting. Again, there are some you know, overvalued companies, but we think it's a really, really interesting multi-year trend that investors should be involved with. Well, it should be an interesting quarter, Jan. Thank you for joining us. Great to see you again. And thank you for watching. That was CEO Jan Van Eck. And I'm Jenna Dagenhart with Asset TV. To receive regular updates from Van Eck's experts, please visit vaneck.com slash subscribe. Mm -hmm.